Hi, I'm Dave Robinson, and welcome to another one of my screencasts where I'll be using R and R Studio to analyze data I've never seen before. As usual, this data comes from the Tidy Tuesday Project, which is an amazing project from the R for Data Science online learning community that every week releases a new data set. So I'm a couple weeks behind, so I decided I'm gonna go for um, one of the ones that I missed. This is from November. Uh, that uh, I just think is really exciting. I wouldn't want to. Um, I wouldn't want to miss, which is code in CRAN packages. So I've just looked at the, the top line. I haven't looked at this data yet, and I'm going to explore it right now. All right. Well, I didn't know there's a Tidy Tuesday R package. That's so cool. Oh, cool. Uh, I'm going to keep that in mind. Uh, should I use that now? I'll use um. Why not? This is cool. Uh, so what I'm going to do actually is install the Tidy Tuesday R package. All right, and looks like I can get it for a particular date. That's really cool. Like this, uh, and I'm going to call it CRAN code. Miss anything? Oh, I see. It's got LOC CRAN packages. Okay, so there's, there's this downloads all the data. That's cool. And then, ooh, this is really neat. And then we have, um, and then we have Tuesday. It actually shows me, oh, that's so cool. I, I didn't know there was this package available. And now I'm gonna look at our lines of code in CRAN packages. All right. And we'll save this as CRAN code. Okay, let's take a look at the data. Mm -hmm. All right, looks like there's one line per language per um, package. So what we can see is that like the A3 package has only R code, but the AAC package has both, let's see, has both HTML and R and a lot more HTML than R. The AVR package has a lot of HTML, some R and so on. Uh, okay, so one of the first questions I would have is what are the most common languages? Programming languages in CRAN packages. So for that, I would do one of my favorite deploy our verbs. I'll be doing a count language sort equals true. I neglected to do library tidyverse, and uh, I can I can uh, take a look at I can visualize say the top twenty by doing a uh, language and geom call coward flip. And uh, I neglected to order it. So unsurprisingly, uh, R is in, I don't know if it's in literally all the packages, but I expect it's pretty close. Uh, but I need to do mutate language. I really need to create a snippet for this. FCT reorder language by N. All right, um, what we can see then is this R markdown HTML, C, C++, these don't surprise me. I guess C, C++ header is a separate extension. And then it gets a lot, uh, a lot rarer. There's some shell, some CSS. I actually would have expected more JavaScript. Um, that's in, uh, like for stuff like shiny packages. Uh, that's cool. So um, that's in terms of number of packages. So I would say uh, I'm gonna. I like to do theme set, theme light. I like to put these two lines up here. And, all right, so that, oh man, 20 packages is just so many. Uh, and I'm gonna throw in a, uh, on the Y side, number of packages that you have code from this language. So that's one of the, the, uh, the, the first steps, as I can see, view the CRAN code. And, all right, and that's one, uh, one, one of the thing uh, we learned. All right, instead of doing number of packages, I could do number of lines of code or number of lines per package. And this makes me think that uh, instead of counting, I probably want to group by the language and summarize a few uh, pieces of information. So one is packages is n. Lines of code is the sum of, I prefer sum of code. Uh, so notice what I'm doing is I'm trying to create a, by, a, a summary by um, 
uh, by language. And I love group by summarize, arrange, descending packages, has to be descending by something. One thing we can see is that R leads unsurprisingly in both the number of packages and the number of lines of code. Uh, and we also have, hmm, and we also have the, yeah, the number of lines of code. And then I could actually add a column here. I could add it in the summarize, why not? I'll call it lines per package which is lines of code divided by the number of packages. Uh, so we learned then is a typical, a, a, hmm, this is lines of code per package that have at least one line of code. So one thing we can see is that if there is a C, C++ header, there's probably a lot of lines in there. That's interesting, I might not have um, expected that. If there's markdown, it's probably pretty small. So it looks like a lot of packages have uh, markdown, but it's likely just a readme. Uh, so then we have like a small amount of, um, of markdown te uh, text within each package. So like a full third of packages have a markdown, only 112 lines for each. Um, some have vignettes in, that are written in tech. Those are a little small. Oh, these can also be vignettes. I should have mentioned that. Uh, some have vignettes written in, in tech. A uh, little bit less, and okay, that's how we can see a little bit about lines per package. What else might I want to summarize? Before I start visualizing, I just want to take a look. I'm actually not that interested. Uh, I might want to know n files is some file. Files per package is n, uh, I call it n, but that's not really it. How many files divided by packages. And now what we can see is that a typical um, R package has 18, uh, about 18 R files in it. I'm gonna do some, do some histogramming and such later, but we can see that like, if there's a header file, there's probably lots of it. Yeah, again, I don't know that much about including uh, library, uh, C and C++ libraries. If there's markdown, there's not a lot of files. Um, um, typical might be one to two. Okay, so that's, um, uh, that's definitely interesting. And this is like a by, I'm interested in one other thing, which is I kind of like this comment, um, this comment column. So I'm actually gonna say, I'm actually interested in something which is, comments is sum of comment, and I'm gonna look for the comment code ratio, which is gonna be the comments divided by the, I'm calling it lines of code. I should really should have just called it code, because they call it because they call it code here. Comments code ratio. Now I've actually done a lot of summarizing before I do any. Um, I've done a lot of summarizing before I've actually done any uh, visualization or any exploring. I just wanted to look at the top view and see like, yeah, markdown. I, I don't even know how markdown files comments. I guess HTML comments or whatever, but like. Markdown doesn't have comments, but R, this is actually interesting to me. I did not expect the ratio of code lines, the comment lines would be 0.4 to one. Um, I wonder if I should do it in reverse and say code comment ratio. I don't have a strong opinion here. Um, no, I, I, I kind of like, I kind of like this, uh, comment code ratio. Okay, so then the, um, and one thing we can see is that of these top few, the header files have lots of comments. I, I don't. I know header files are a little bit like um, odd. They use, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe maybe it uses lots of lots of code. I'm, I'm not really that uh, clear. It seems like C, certainly C C plus plus header is a bit unusual in terms of it has lots more. It has more lines per package, more files per package, more comments than other types of um of packages. Uh, so lines per package, files per package. Okay, so this is a bi-language summary. Now we've already done one graph out of it. I'm actually going to uh, put this down here to, to like, to, so that each, all of my aggregations, oops, packages. So all of my aggregations can, um, can happen in one, um, in one place. So this is number of packages. Uh, something that might be interesting is like I've got a couple things I can I can rate it on. Code packages, lines of code, 
number of files that might each be interesting um, visualizations. I'm going to try visualizing all three to, uh, in one graph. Uh, I'll try to be a little concise with this. Uh, the way that I would do it is I would gather um, into type or metric and um, value the packages, code, and files um, columns. And I'm actually going to make match. I'm not going to do this yet. I'm going to do this in a little bit. Uh, then what I'm going to do is group by each um, each metric. Top n, take the top. Let's say just ten. Let's actually say the top eight because we can kind of see that it does fast drop off. Top eight by the value. And then I'm going to make a, a bar plot that is faceted. It's not going to look amazing yet because we're not um, ordering it properly. So I'm going to do package value wrap it by metric and I'm going to uh, uh, code flip. That's the word I was looking for. Uh -huh. Oh, I actually meant language here. And I will need scales equals free. Uh, now, it's the, the, the ordering doesn't look great yet. Um, and I actually also might want to say n call is one, put the stack these on top of each other. You know, there are a few ways we can, we can do this. Um, but the next step that I'm actually going to do is I want to um, order these. I'm going to use the tidy text package to do that. I'm going to say that after I've grouped them, I'm going to ungroup them and say, Language is f is reorder within. Reorder within comes in the tidy text package. As of some time, I think um, 2019, uh, reorder within was added to the tidy text package. And you can say language value um, within each metric. And then I add here scale x. I think it's scale x reordered. I can't remember whether I need to do scale x or scale y reordered. It looks like it's scale x reordered. Great. Um, notice what it did is it actually ordered each of these, but according to their own facets. So right here, R and C++ headers on top, but then C and C++ kind of switch positions in terms of more code, more file files. Uh, last change that I'm going to make is say metric is string to title of metric. I don't like lowercase words on, um, uh, on these, and I'm going to add a couple labels. So I'll say X is... Uh, number of lines of code, files, or packages. So these are three ways we have of displaying the um, distributions, uh, the, the, the top few. Uh, we can choose different metrics. What I'm going to add is labels as scales, comma. I like this more. Uh, all right, so there's lines of code, files, or packages. Uh, in any of them are leads uh, in uh, HTML will tend to have fewer files, more code. All right, uh, but this just gives a sense of like comparing some of the languages. All right, that uh, the reason I'm putting those three together is they're basically all three metrics of like how much a language is used. I wanted to compare those three, but co the code comment ratio is a bit different. Uh, what I might do there is I c I would act I'm actually going to start by filtering to say you must be in at least I don't know 20 packages or what are you doing. Uh, or it's not it's not like widely used enough I might I might lower that or raise that threshold in a second and now I'll say graph the pa graph the um, uh, the number of packages on the x-axis and the, let's look at the comment code so if I want to say how much are languages commented and I look at the comment code ratio uh, and I do a geom point. I need to, I know already I'm going to do scale x log 10. So this uh, is a way of saying like here are the, 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 pa the languages that appear in the most packages, how much are they commented. One of the reasons that I want to, um, to, uh, to, to put packages excuse me, on the x-axis 
is I don't want to overly be uh, look at oh this one package has this one language appeared in two packages and it was very well commented sure but it's also not that interesting at, at, um, at a zoomed out perspective so I like to keep track of how many packages it used in at the same time as we look at the comment code ratio uh, I didn't even look at this but I could have started by arranging descending comment code ratio what are the most commented languages and we do in fact see Jupiter is that Jupiter notebook does it say Jupiter Notebook, Reason ML, and Perl are all the uh, Jupiter Notebooks are quote extremely commented. I, I don't quite know what 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 counts to comment in a Jupiter Notebook, but the idea is like this. But maybe it's any text that's not the code, uh, whatever it is. Like it's not a um, it's not meaningful really to consider. Like it's not that interesting. It only appears in three packages. Uh, Reason ML only appears in one. Perl might be interesting. In fact, I think we see Perl here. Uh, and Fortran is probably interesting. 312 packages, Fortran, it's F77. Um, I don't know a lot about that, but um, uh, it will, it'll pop up in whatever our, our results are. Yeah, we can also see like C Sharp, it's in one package. Who cares that in that package it was well commented? It's not meaningful. Uh, so that's why we're looking at both at the same time. And I'm gonna say number of packages Comment code ratio. And oh, I almost forgot. Very importantly, I'd want the geom text label equals um, uh, a language. So, one thing I'd do here is probably start with a check overlap equals true. I might use gg repel if that doesn't look good. Uh, and where's my other stuff? V just one, h just one. Here it is. So, it's like r, mark down this. C++, C, shell, JavaScript, Fortran, born again shell, never heard of that, that's interesting. Uh, and I'm gonna add expand limits, x equals one. Or 10, I guess, uh, I don't know, I, I needed to try and just see, see these, um, this text over here. Okay, so the idea we see from this is that of the languages that are used in like, so R, we actually see that R is fairly well commented. That actually makes some sense to me because um, R uh, function definitions need to be, um, each function definition needs to be commented. Uh, but interestingly, the, the, for the, for the how many this is, 30, 50, something like that, packages that use Java, well, pretty, there's uh, oh, only two lines of code for every comment. Um, and uh, then Perl is extremely well commented in the, uh, 20 something pack or 30 whatever so 38 packages that we saw that use uh, Perl Okay, so in turn we can see markdown never commented YAML isn't commented CSS uh, DOS batch again. I'm not that sure what like what commenting would even mean in these cases But this tells us something like um this tells us something about how much um the comment code ratio in CRAN packages Okay, that's enough looking by language. I could look at things like lines per, actually I'm gonna take one more look at one more thing, yes. I'm gonna do the same graph, but I'm gonna do it as lines per package. Uh, did I call it lines per package? Um, I don't know how this is gonna look. I might need to put the Y axis on a log scale. We're gonna find out. I, oh, I should call this lines. I think this looks okay even with the y-axis not on a log scale. What this is showing is that if there is a non-R uh, language in a file, it often has more lines per package than R. But I mean, a lot of these kind of like hover around the same thing, which is, Lena, actually, I would, I don't know that it, I really should have given a guess first because I think it's interesting that the number of R lines per package is, um, what is that, 1,500? What is that, something like 1,500? Uh, lines per package, about 1,500 R lines per package. When something has Java, it goes all out um, and has more than 5,000 lines per package. Uh, C and C++ like 2,000 lines per package, so more than the average amount of R, but not much more. Uh, same, similar with Python, this, two, this kind of sweet spot of 2,000 lines of code makes a package. Uh, I kind of like that. Uh, there are exceptions among these. XML is bare is not exactly code, uh, nor is HTML precisely code. But um, yeah, we can see these um, uh, distributions. Okay, like two thousand li lines package. All right, that's really that's uh, that's interesting. All right, 
One thing I think I'm going to do, I'm not going to do it yet, but one thing I know that I'm going to do is bring in additional information about packages. I'd be interested in, um, I can get things like the maintainer and the um, number of dependencies, things like that. Uh, maybe when it was it was most recently released to CRAN. Uh, I think that's going to be, um, uh, that's going to be something I can, I can combine into here. Okay, but I'm going to start with, um, here we go. By language. All right. All right. I, I, that, what I was saying is that I think this was was enough visualization by language. Now I'm going to look at at distributions and packages a little bit. For one thing, it's clear that R is really interesting. I mean, it's it's the thing that if it's not in every package, it's probably in pretty close. Uh, so how much R code is there in each package? So what I'm going to do is go back to our CRAN code filter language equals R and look at a distribution. Uh, look at the lines of code, uh, GM histogram, uh, and I know I'm pretty confident we need a, a log scale. There we have it. I recently said that uh, the log is the new normal. That um, you can almost always expect to find a log normal uh, distribution rather than a normal distribution in real world data. It's it, much more common. Uh, and in fact, here we see that on a logarithmic scale, I'll just make that clear, I'm going to do labels equals scales, comma, I like uh, how it looks, 10,000, 100,000. Looks like the mode package, uh, the mode or the median, uh, both, the median package has a little under 1,000 lines of code. We saw the average 1,500, but median less than 1,000 uh, lines of R code. Uh, and we see that, that it has this log normal shape. If I had removed the, the logarithmic uh, distribution, it would have said, oh, I see. There are some extremes, packages with tons of lines of code. Most packages have very little code. But by making it a log scale, we get to um, visualize it in, in, uh, in this way. Uh, so that's something we, we know is like how much R is there. Something I'm really interested in is what packages have the most code, which have the least. Uh, I don't have any guess necessarily any guesses yet. Uh, so what has the most R code descending? I'm guessing like I've got a wild guess the carrot, which is a package that, that works with a lot of different um, packages, might have a lot of R code. I bet Broom is up there. Broom is a package I originally created in um, a release in 2014, now maintained by Alex Hayes, and it has. Um, uh, tidying code for a lot of different pack uh, for a lot of models from a lot of different packages. I wouldn't be surprised if we're on the top 20, but I don't have a good feel for this yet. So I'm gonna um, start by descending lines of code. All right, so we actually don't see Broom anywhere here. Uh, not not yet. Actually, almost none of these packages I recognize. Uh, here we go. The VGAM, I do recognize VGAM. I have used some, some models from the general additive models. Uh, it looks like it has 74,000 lines of code. Gosh. Um, yeah, I don't think Broom's going to be really anywhere up here. Uh, it's been a while since I saw it, but I'm going to find out. Uh, that's really, that's uh, wild. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do is view this browse through little. I've heard of almost none of these. Um, I've heard of Levon, which is some type of modeling. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, it goes down a while till we're getting to, to. I've heard of QTL, which is a genetics package. Uh, Some of I think, been. A, I've heard of Sparkly R, which is kind of a tidyverse approach to working with Spark. Yeah, I think just like uh, and iGraph. Um, no, I was completely wrong that um, that Broom would have, would be anywhere here. Uh, so the. Um, so I've heard of some of these. I think some of these have been around a long time. Have a lot of methods in them. Might have a lot of. Um, plotting code, and these have in the tens of thousands of lines of code. Uh, all right, so that that's, um, it's cool to browse through. Something I'm actually going to try there is carrot. It barely makes the top uh, 100. Uh, so the, um, so yeah, so I didn't have a good guess of what uh, packages had the most uh, code. Which has the least? I'm going to sort this the other which way and say, um, all right, so there are Two packages that have no so XLS uh, S, jars. I'm guessing this is a Java only package. Um, I don't know about what this this one is. I guess it, there's some data. This is a data package. I'm guessing there's some data packages here. The ggplot2 movies is a data package and has uh, only one line of code, which I assume is something to do with with the there's like the documentation for this um for the object that's included. Uh, so 
that's this actually this peak that makes this not a not like as clean a normal distribution as it might other a log normal distribution might seem is uh, there's a bunch of your data packages that have only um, uh, a couple lines of lines of uh, actual code. Now curious, how many lines of code does Broom have? Only 6,600, like compared, so well above average, but compared to a lot of these we're looking at, it's really uh, nowhere close. I wonder which has the most files. Notice I'm exploring in this case with, um, by, uh, I'm exploring in here, I could have explored with creating visualizations of these, uh, but I think like visualizations just of looking at a couple package names aren't as interesting to me as kind of exploring this way. Uh, so something we learn is like, yeah, I haven't heard of, I haven't heard of many of these, um, uh, and I wonder li I want yeah I wonder how many uh, they tend to have a lot of code for, spread across a lot of packages, um, and yeah the uh, do I recognize a lot of these man there's so many packages. See, so yeah, Broom is in the top hundred for number of files. It's because each um, each tidier has has a separate uh, method. Um, Plotly's up here. Yeah, um, recipe is a newer package in the model versus up here. All right, so um, that actually makes me think of something, which is I'm always very interested in the tidyverse packages, uh, and I'm curious what the distribution within the tidyverse packages looks like. There is a function called tidyverse packages. Hey, look at that. Um, I never understood. I think there's something up here with the read Excel, but what I'm going to do um, uh, is quickly say. Uh, String extract only the, I guess only the letters and numbers. Yep, I got you plot two. I got okay, uh, and that, that that at least cleans this out. So I'm just going to say packages are these, and I'm going to look at cram code. Filt. I'm going to start by let, let's look just at the tidyverse packages. I'm gonna leave this in here. Um, but let's look just the tidyverse packages. Say is filter package in packages. Is it big bigger in case I wanna see the environment. All right, here we go. And it's not called package. It's called PKG name. All right. And the um, one thing we can do, we learn here, let's see, arrange descending. So tide, this is not everything that is related to the tidyverse or anything. This is just everything that is is a dependency of the tidy of uh, the, the tidyverse package depends on. So there's other things. There's the model verse um, is separate. There's uh, there's packages like tidy text that are very important uh, when you use the tidy tidyverse, but not are not technically part of this group. Um, so I'm, I'm just noting like this is not an exclusive list of the tidyverse. But let's look at descending code. When we learn is C code in Haven, which is like a data import export package, uh, is is the one that has the most code in it. Um, uh, ggplot2 has tons of lines of R, um, but, and so do dplyr, no surprise, rlang, brooms up there, but the um, uh, dbplyr has lots, loop, I did not, I would not have said lubricated to have so much code, but I, think, I guess uh, lubricated works with dates and times, I guess there's a lot of details to working with dates and times that need to get coded out. Um, cool. So uh, I'm actually going to filter for language equals R. Excuse me, excuse me. And look at, yeah, these are some of the ones, these are the biggest tidyverse packages, just in terms of lines of code. That doesn't mean they're the most important, doesn't mean they that the most work goes into them. It's just these are some of the ones that, that have the most lines of code. And uh, what are the simplest tidyverse packages? I'm guessing tidyverse is. Yeah, tidyverse has a um, little bit of code for functions like this one, um, that tidyverse packages. Uh, Magritar uh, provides the pipe operator and uh, not a ton of code required to do that. And that's part of my point is that just because there's not a lot of code doesn't mean it's not unbelievably powerful and important. Uh, notice how often I use the pipe operator. And then we work our way up um, to the ones that, have, that that just take tons of code to get done. Uh, things that, that are the underlying, gra the underlying gra grammar like ggplot2, dplyr, and rlang. Um, and those require yeah, in the more than 10,000 line of code area. In general, we actually see here, um, 
it looks like the, the median tidyverse package has a little more code than the median um, non tidyverse package, uh, but not by, not really by much. Uh, I just seen that like most of them over a thousand here. That's not quite true, but it's not a big difference. Um, the uh, yeah, this is what makes up our um, our tidy our set of tidyverse uh, tools. I'm gonna do something a little bit. Uh, cute here. I, I I would like to see other tidy uh, packages that are in the that are tidy related here. I'm curious if I do string detect pkg name the word tidy. What packages have the have the word tidy in, in them? Some of these I definitely recognize. Some of them I do less. Wow, there are 33 packages with the word tidy in them. Um, Cool. Some of these are official tidyverse packages, like tight, like the these called tidy models. Uh, uh, some I think are, are a bit are a bit separate. Some, um, but again, there's no such like official definition of the tidyverse. Uh, and um, uh, I'm going to include these. See, I'm going to say filter and include these in the list. Or uh, oops, I meant or oops, I really meant oh yeah, or here it is. Or string detect pkg name tidy. I just kind of liked to see like like tidy text. I think doesn't have a ton of code. I wouldn't be surprised if tidy text is towards the bottom. Um, nope. I think. Let me see. Nope. It's a little bit above. Well, it's about. It's about the average, uh, or a little bit above median. All right. So the um. Wow, tidy R gets a lot done and not a crazy amount of code. Uh, it's this, yeah, this is really fun just to, um, it's fun just to look through this. Uh, all right, and tidy models mostly like, like wraps other ones. All right, so this is this is looking at like, um, I'm gonna skip that and look just at the official tidyverse so there's no uh, question about why, why things are included. And I'm actually gonna skip the R and here's what I'm gonna do, I'm going to Mutate pack. I'm gonna create a graph by a first graph uh, in a while. I'm gonna say FCT reorder uh, package name by the lines of code uh, by code by sum, and I'm gonna say package name code fill equals language code flip. We're gonna create a bar plot of the tidyverse packages. How? Title: How much code does each tidyverse package have? One thing that's actually a little bit annoying here is that um, uh, I'd like to lump these together, but I actually don't know that I, I'm not 100% sure that I can lump with a weight. I'd like to lump, but uh, base them on the um, see that the uh, see the shame is I, I I I this keeps the most common values and that's. Fine, but I would rather we kept um, we did it as in the ones that appear in the most packages. It doesn't uh, do them by the number of lines of code. So I'm going to try something here. I'm going to say language FCT lump language six. Yeah, you know that looks pretty good. I feel pretty good about this. Uh, it takes the ones that are in the most packages and it keeps them together. Um, okay, so we can see. Ah, yeah. So what, what does this tell us? This tells that ggplot2 and dplyr require the most code. Uh, it tells us that I'm also going to reorder the, these language equals fct reorder language by code by code sum. Uh, I want that. Kind of want that in the other order. Ah, it looks great. Okay, uh, so what this is showing then is, I might want to reverse this ledger, I'm going to figure that out in a second, uh, and, and put this here. Yeah, here's what I'm going to do. I actually want R to be the base of each of these, not be at the edge. So I'm going to keep this, and I'm going to see if I remember this. I might not. Guides, let's see if I can remember how to do this. I, wonder, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm, I want this to show up, but I want R to be at the top here, uh, with co even with code flip. I'm going to try this. Guides fill equals guide legend reverse equals true uh, and I need a plus at the end well wow, hey look that worked um, so what I did here was if this line weren't included 
other would have been at the top, which is uh, not, this doesn't read well. Here now I can see, ah yes, R starts here and, and goes from here. I'm gonna see if I, I'm gonna reduce the number of um, others here, I think it's a little overly colorful. Ah, nah, nah. I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna include it this way. Uh, I want to see that ggplot has a lot of SVGs. I don't know a lot about what that would mean. Uh, okay, and um, yeah, what, what else can we see here? We can see that a lot of packages have a little bit of markdown. That's probably the readme or, or some vignettes. Uh, that a, um, that some packages, let's see. Uh, there's some C++ and dplyr, uh, Haven, Lubridate, and read, especially Reader and, and XML2. Uh, and what else can we see? In terms of R code, Haven doesn't have much R code, but tons of C code. Uh, all right, so we, we're, we're getting like a feel for some of these um, uh, these distributions. Okay. Um, all right, so these tidyverse package have. I'm gonna finish out later in this x. Let me see this number of lines of code. Cool. And um, here's a th here's a tide, and I'm gonna say fill. Ah, uh, that's a nice proper graph. All right, I'm gonna um, I'll hold on to that and. Uh, right. I'm also interested, I might be interested in within these tidyverse packages, within this tidy, these tidyverse packages, which is, say, the best comment did. Um, I'm going to focus on R code because all of them have some R code in them. And mutate comment code ratio equals, notice I'm looking at a package le level now, not at a language level as I was before range descending comment code ratio. And here's where we see that um, the RStudio API doesn't have a lot of code, but it actually has even more, co has plenty of comments. Uh, same with Magreeder. Some of the ones with the most code have the least comments. Hey, Broom is very well commented. Look at that. That's kind of neat. Uh, again, this all goes to Alex Hayes, who's, who's done an amazing job maintaining and, and completely revamping the, po the pro uh, pa package in the last year and a half. Um, and uh, which has a lower comment code ratio is Tibble and dbplyr, all right? Um, but none of them below 0.27, which sounds pretty good to me. Uh, yes. So what I'm going to do actually is um, I'm curious with the comment code ratio across packages uh, within our code. So what I'm going to do is try looking at all of our um, filter language equals R. Here's something I'm going to do. I am going to change the first data set that I looked at, uh, the, the, the CRAN code. I'm going to put is tidyverse up here because I'm tired of, of continually checking it. And no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, it, didn't, it didn't feel that. It doesn't feel that important. Uh, I'm going to say if else package name in packages, then tidyverse other as if uh, you can divide everything just into tidyverse and other, which doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, but I just want to take a look, for example, uh, I, I, here at this point I can actually start comparing uh, things, like for example I can say, what is the distribution of the comment code ratio? Okay, it uh, looks like we need a log scale. This is not uh, log normal, and we can see, because what we can sort of see here is that the um, the comment code ratio breaks down around here, uh, and it's rare to have more comments than, than code. Uh, I might want to say, like, you really need more than a certain amount of code, I don't know, more than code 100 before this is very meaningful. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, I don't know, if the, know how I feel about it, but like, I wasn't crazy about the idea that you have, um, uh, I just wasn't crazy about the idea that you have one line of code and 50 comments, like a data package, and that's a 50 to 1 ratio. Uh, so here would be where we see, um, and I'm going to try scales equals label equals scales, comma. How does this look? Nope, nope, that's not the one. Scales, that's not a percentage. I actually don't remember. I just don't want that scientific notation. Ah. Oh, well, this is 0.1. 0.001, one out of a thousand, um, and there's kind of this distribution where it's like there's a handful of packages with more code than comments, but not a lot. Uh, how does that differ between the tidyverse packages and the other ones? 
I might look at this as two, dis two histograms. Um, and look at facet wrap by tidyverse and call equals one. And I'll need free Y scales because they're going to be very different numbers. Uh, what this shows is that most tidyverse packages are around the like, they're, the, they're in the better end of the spectrum. There's lots of ones that have way more comments than code. Um, this, maybe it should have been a code comment ratio now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, that would have flipped this around. Hmm. What does the co so on a log axis, this will just make it look reversed. But maybe it's just like it's easier to say. And now I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna uh, scales, scales equals. So label. I'm trying to remember how to do this. Scales, not comma. Um, scales number. Sure. I don't know. Uh, and accuracy equals number format. Ugh. I guess that's what I'm looking for. Whatever. I'm 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 not actually that good at remembering now how to how to do these formatting, uh, but this gets a little closer. So the idea is like the code to comment ratio, which is actually different. Than it was like co code to comment ratio. How many lines? I actually kind of like that. At least on a log scale, I like that more than the um, than comment to code ratio. Than comment to code ratio. This says for every line of how many lines of code are there for each comment. Uh, tidyverse it ranges from one to eight or something like that. That whereas um, overall can spread all the way over here. Still not that weird. It's like kind of a typical part of chunk of the distribution. All right. So the um, uh, I was I was just I was just interested in comparing that. Okay. Uh, what else do we have? Crank. What's the best commented packages? Among those with at least 100 lines of code. Mutate code comment ratio equals code over comment. Uh, and filter for language equals R. Uh, ones that have no comments, naturally. Uh, comment greater than zero. Uh, yeah, so basically it shows one, it's, it's some of these that have like, uh, that have tons of code and almost no commenting. Do, I wonder if maybe it doesn't count documentation as comments, because, uh, oh no, that's right, of course, you don't need to document in R oxygen. Uh, that makes some sense. Uh, I'm so used to using like comments that look like this in a package, uh, like param and then the, the parameter name and then description, blah 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 blah. I'm so used to using those. I forgot that they're optional. You don't. They don't need to. Um, you can also write the um, uh, the uh, man, man files yourself. Uh, but and that works when we have some packages with tons and tons of code and not a single comment, or, or neither not a single comment or very few comments. Uh, okay, so that's some things we um, we uh, can ta could take a look at. All right, I I feel like I've looked enough at, at commenting. I've looked enough at the tidyverse. I want to look at something else. I want to look actually at um, I want to bring in some other package data, like the number something like for example the number of um, downloads. Uh, I'm going to remind myself, what is here? What is in packages? Oop, it's defunct. Available packages. Oh man, it's a matrix. I kind of remember that. Uh, all right, so I remember how can I do... So this shows like... What does this show? This shows a couple things. It shows like what does each package suggest? What is each pack? What is the license? Uh, does it have... Where is it? Does it have something like the date? No. Uh, should I use this? Uh, what else do I have? I thought there was, I think there's another Tidy Tuesday one that worked with Cran maybe last year. If I look at last year's one, R and R package downloads, I'm gonna bring in a previous Tidy Tuesday data set. Uh, what I'm gonna do is, um, let's see. Our downloads year okay. No, but that's 
our down this is our downloads not packages okay I'm going to I'm just trying to remind myself down okay cran logs I wonder can I find the most pack okay so can I say can I get all packages I'm just reminding myself what um, what I can work with here Maybe I'll take one day, one recent day, yesterday, could be. Uh, copy link address, what is this? Okay, and can I try read CSV this? Ah, look at that, okay. That is not a package. Ah, here are the packages, I think. I keep forgetting. It might be interesting, like what, like how does popularity compare to the size of a package, and what are some outliers there? So read see, now. Popularity is actually really complicated. If you're asking a question about um, uh, package popularity is very complicated. If you uh, if you're asking about uh, packages, if you're asking about packages, because um, go all right, package downloads. I'm going to take this, I'm going to distinct only every package and IP ID because I, I vaguely remember that, um, so this is take package downloads from yesterday. Uh, I've, I'm just trying to get something very rough. I vaguely remember that, that there's an issue of um, the same IP, IP getting, uh, getting a package multiple times. Uh, so I'm going to do it, look at it distinct, uh, distinctly. Um, the other issue is now the big issue here is dependencies. Um, packages that a lot of things depend on are going to be are going to get uh, downloaded a lot. But I'm still going to try. I, I still I wonder is this uh, reasonable at all? I think RCPP is going to be at the top because it. Oh, interesting actually. That used to be the case. Now it's it's here. Um, but yeah, Arlang because uh, a lot of Tiverse things depend on this. Uh, as soon as like dplyr our Anyone who installs this is going to get Arlang. Maybe they get vectors too. I don't know as much about vectors. I know almost nothing about um, ellipsis. Uh, maybe that's the new lazy eval. I uh, don't quite remember. What is zealot? What is the reverse depends for this? Vectors. Okay, so <laughs> that's that, that's kind of that's kind of neat. Uh, notice because this incredibly popular package vector, or necessary package vectors, is included, it includes uh, anything that it uses, including uh, Zealot. What does it import? What does it import? Yep. All right. Uh, probably other ones uh, do too. So like, so so this is not a, a like really quite the most popular packages. It's just meant to be like um, this is just meant to look at here we go uh, pack. Downloads by package. Okay. And now I can take this and, and compare it to CRAN code. Filter language equals R. I'm going to call it package name. And I'm going to give it the name. Uh, I'm going to give it the name downloads. Inner join downloads by package. And now I'm going to look at, um, let's see, now let me, let me arrange quickly descending downloads. And this shows uh, those top few. Uh, and something I'm curious about is, 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 is there a correlation between the size of a package and how often it's downloaded? I'm probably not going to be interested in any, uh, in any of the ones where downloads, 
Uh, let's let's start with just the ones with at least a hundred downloads yesterday. Uh, let's make it at least a thousand. Uh, so it's three hundred packages with at least a thousand downloads yesterday. Uh, let's look within those. Then we'll try the the rare ones. Just don't want to get too crowded too fast. And let's look at downloads and number of lines of R code. Let's start just by looking at scatter. Okay. And uh, I'm definitely going to need some scale. Um, some both of these are on a. Um, logarithmic scale, so scale x log 10, scale y log 10, uh, and there's not a correlation. We do see there are a few common packages that have um, uh, that have very little code. Those are some of those like data packages we talked about. I'm going to change the download threshold to 100. Uh, yeah, so like what we're seeing is, yeah, I think it's not too crazy. There's no particular um, correlation. I just want to get a feel for of the most popular packages, how much code do they have. Um, you know, there might be a little bit of a correlation. Yeah, I wonder if I threw in a, it's, it's not an amazing correlation to be clear, but if I threw in a smoothing line, eh, yeah, looks like uh, there could be, there, that in general ones with fewer downloads might have, um, uh, might have uh, less code. I think, I think that kind of just, just is the idea, like there's a lot of packages that were very quickly set up that aren't, that, that's not necessarily a correlation causation thing. Uh, we definitely see that here are, are packages with, with uh, almost no code are data pack. There's data packages that get used a lot. What are the data packages that get used a lot? I'm curious. I could throw in a geom text here, but that's actually like it just is too much information on this plot. Uh, it's not. Uh, so I'm instead going to filter for code is less than ten. Arrange by descending downloads. What are the popular data packages? Oh, uh, or low code packages. Keep forgetting about about the BH package. What was the BH package? Um, BHR. Oh yes, it's a C plus um, plus. Uh, provides a bunch of, of portable C plus uh, plus libraries. So that makes complete sense. All right, and uh, what is P log R? It has one line of code. Presumably it's, um, oh, oh, great. Um, it's a logging library for C++. So we're looking at a couple of popular, so the, here's a popular data package, NYC Flights, uh, as well as ggplot2 to movies and map data. There's some that are C++ based, like Swagger and PLOG R. Uh, I guess, you know, extra font DB is some kind of um, font database. This one is based in Java. Uh, I'm guessing UUID as C++. Uh, okay, so the, um, uh, yeah, so that so that's one thing, one thing we we can look at in terms of what are like often downloaded packages, uh, but it's not it's not um it's not all that that exciting, uh, but yeah, but that, that's something to look at for for popularity. I wonder if I could say something about comment ratio. Uh, what if I try this? I throw this in, but instead of looking at downloads, uh, sorry, instead of looking at code, I look at the code. To comments ratio, did I? And um, where's my scale? Wait. Yeah, what happened to my scale x log ten? Where did it go? Yeah, why did that hit disappear? All right, I'll just put. Oh, okay, let me put everything back. Oh, nuts. Uh, okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is copy this and say instead I'm going to look at code over comment. Comment. So one thing is if there's not a correlation that the most popular packages tend to be uh, better co oh, code to comment, maybe a tiny bit of a, of a connection uh, that the most that the best ones have. Um, Bit more comments, but no, not not really a strong, um, not a strong connection. Um, there are some where the code to comment ratio is zero, where there are zero comments. That uh, I'm also going to actually say filter code is greater than ten. Remember how that that wasn't that meaningful if there was no code. But there's still commentless packages that get installed a lot. Uh, Okay, so I, so I want to take a quick look at like comparing the number of downloads on one day to some of these things. It's a very rough proxy for uh, for, for quote popularity. Um, all right. Uh, 
we looked at the um, we looked at tidyverse we looked a little bit at number of, at, at downloads I wonder if there's some uh, if I look at available packages oops I'm disappointed that it doesn't have the date on any of these it does have the suggests uh, should I look at that um, okay uh, I wonder can I do as tipple on available packages Looks like I can, and it works pretty well. And uh, what I'm going to do is take available packages, put it through as tipple. Hmm. Yeah. I'm going to say package metadata. I'm also going to janitor uh, clean names, make the name snake case. Okay. And. Uh, what I'm going to do is take our CRAN code. I really like, I like focusing on the R. I don't know if it's that important, but I'm going to say, is there some connection between, let's say, the license and amount of code or the comment ratio? So I'm going to interjoin this with um, the version column is going to be. Uh, uh, I don't want to keep the version from the package metadata, that's the current version, and I want to use the version that has this number of lines of code. So inner join with package metadata by version. Oh, by package. Move the file to, that's not um, from package metadata. All right, and now I could do, for example, ggplot that says how much code is there uh, for different um, licenses. I could say mutate license fct lump license 10. 10? Sure. And then say geom box plot for code explained by license. Code flip scale y log 10. Are there ones that have more uh, licenses? So there's actually only one connection I can really see here. And I'm going to give me a moment while I SCT reorder license code. Yeah, so one thing, the, the only thing we can really see is that CC0 means um, public domain or as close to public domain as we can legally get. And it's common in data packages. Data packages have less code in them. Uh, we, saw, we saw that earlier. Otherwise, not a particular. Um, trend. Now what if I did, um, what other, what else do we have in our package metadata? We have suggests, well, I'm going to get to those in a second. We have whether the license is, count license is free open source. Eh, that's not a very good, um, that's not a, not a, not a high quality column. And eh, neither is that. Uh, okay, then what I'm going to do is one more thing. I'm going to look at, uh, have I looked at this before? I'm going to look at the number of packages. Oh, yeah, here's what I'm going to do. As another metric for dependency, I'm going to say, um, let's take our package metadata. Pa and look at the things that each of them imports. And now I'm going to use a function called separate rows on the imports uh, into our import, into a column called import. Uh, I'm going to remember this. Uh, separate rows goes. Oh, I know I just say sep equals comma space. Or just, yeah, comma space. And now you can see, or actually, let me just do a comma. And now I'm going to grab out the names of the packages. Uh, so I, could, I think I can do extract, uh, extract imports, import, um, and then I'm just going to do it as A to Z uh, digits plus, I can't, and oh, and dot. So what I'm doing is the extract with some of the, um, oops. Oh, it doesn't like, that's not good. Um, I grabbed out 0 0.4. 
because you need uh, capitals too. So trying to find the first string that matches that. Uh, and that will also trim the, uh, the spaces from each side. So I counted what, what gets imported the most. Stats, utils, methods, graphics, RCP, and so on. Uh, I might be, uh, look, I didn't put a lot of work into this, like this, this string cleaning. Uh, so, uh, so it could, let's see, filter not is an A. In, actually, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna do it here, filter not is an A import for the ones that couldn't get extracted. Okay, and say, N reverse import. So this is number of imp um, so uh, as a metric of uh, importing, so instead of looking at number of downloads, I'm going to look at how many packages import this package. So just a little bit of data cleaning that came from available packages up here and turned it into the number of them um, that get imported. Uh, and why would why am I doing that? Uh, oh, I'm going to call this. Yeah, I just call it, I call it import. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is look at our. Um, uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to ignore. Let me see. Okay, I am going to look at our, our CRAN code, filter language equals R, and I'm curious about like, do the, do the most, what pa how much does, um, does, how many packages import you have any relationship to the amount of code you have? I'm not expecting there to necessarily be a correlation, but it might be interesting to see what are the extremes on either side. Uh, so what I can say is left join with N import by package name equals import. Place an A. Now, if I looked at the ones that aren't zero, filter for the ones where N reverse import is greater than zero. Yeah, there's some that get uh, imported by one, two, a lot. And uh, I'm going to plot for a moment the um, N reverse import. Geom point uh, as a uh, and draw the and say the amount of code. I'm just wondering. Uh, oops. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the number of packages that depend on you versus the size of the package. Uh, so the uh, depend meaning uh, import. I'm gonna throw up. No, let me see. This says yeah. Universe import zero. Um, yeah. So the um, uh, what this is is all the packages that not, that uh, nothing depends on at all the zeros. Um, so this is showing is like, eh, it's not necessarily showing a connection, but it is. It is just one thing to notice. It's rare to be a package that many things depend on, and you have very little code. Uh, that's not surprising. Uh, there are a couple exceptions. This is probably a. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised. If this might have been. This might be BH uh, that has very little. Um, that has very little code, but it, because it's C plus uh, plus, I'm going to throw in a geom text. This is just like a direction I want to take. Again, not because I think number of lines of code is like related to importance and we would expect it to be, but I just want to see like what are the outliers? What are the big? Pa what are the packages without much R code that get um, a lot of imports? Uh, and if I said, let me see the. Package name check. Oh, that's gonna look terrible. I'm gonna say filter and reverse import greater than 10, otherwise, we're gonna have just too many things. Uh, problem I did, it, yeah, here we go. I actually wonder where where BH went. Maybe I, I messed up some joins somewhere. Um, but yeah, it looks like UUID, PNG, these packages without without a ton of R code in them. Uh, but amount of R code, but a lot of packages that depend on them. Okay, so yeah, I just wanted I wanted to like try and get, why was I bringing in the this one is wrong. Uh, amount of R, sorry. Y is the amount of R code. X is number of packages that import this. 
lines of our code. Why was I looking at this? It's not because, again, I think there would be some correlation, the bigger packages get more um, are more important or vice versa. Because I wanted to like, I wanted to add some dimension uh, to this that wasn't just the 14,000 R packages uh, that exist. Many of those R packages, they might be useful, they could be useful for a particular application, but they're not. Um, the, but uh, I want to like filter down to what are the few hundred that a lot of the or the few dozen that like are used by a large set of people as, as a as a critical part of their work and, and try looking at those subset. Look at the tidy versus one subset, um, and I look now and I've been looking now at the um, high highly downloaded or highly imported ones. Uh, either way, this gives you a new even if you, you this wasn't the approach you wanted to take. This gives you two ways of gathering additional data about packages. One is to download it from the CRAN logs, and we saw that that was actually a previous Tidy Tuesday. Looked at package down number of package downloads. Another was uh, to look at the available packages matrix, which can be turned into a table and uh, created in this metadata set. Uh, and after doing a little bit of cleaning, we looked at number of packages that import. All right, so that was our um, that was our exploration. We looked at um, we looked at the most common languages. We looked at uh, most common languages by code, files, or packages. We looked at how much each of those languages were commented, uh, and we looked. Uh, the comment code ratio. Uh, we looked also at um, at just the tidyverse packages, and I thought this was cool to um, uh, to see the to uh, like look across these tidyverse packages, see the ones that require tons of code, the ones that don't require a ton of code, and what their respective languages are. Um, a lot we didn't do. We didn't uh, spend that much time on C and C plus plus code. I think there's a lot that can be done uh, by looking at those. All right, that's our time. Um, uh, I'm. I haven't uh, always been doing the Tidy Tuesday every week, but I'm really I'm hoping that come the new year in uh, 2020, I'll be, get back into the rhythm of doing it every week. Um, and I was always really excited to uh, to analyze this data. I hope you had fun. I certainly did. See you next week.